Hi, it's Josie and today I'd like to talk to you about corners. Corners are important because it's uh, important for you to understand the aids. They're aids we use for everything. They're the bending aids that we put on a horse. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Then I'm going to show you some bending and how I do it through a corner. And then I'm going to show you a couple of things that people do wrong and give you some tips to fix them up. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get on with it. Here comes the theory, guys. So I've done a video on bend and bending your horse and how to bend them. And I'll link that up here and in the description. So you can go and look at that if you don't understand that or if you just want a refresher. And so today we'll get on with bending. But remember I told you in that other video that I think of my horses because they can bend more in the neck than they can from here to here and from here to here can't actually bend because all of their vertebrae are fused. So I think of them as basically three carriages or three separate pieces of the horse, but think of it like three carriages of a train. You might get a visualization with that. So you don't want to pull the front train like this if you're on a nice curved line because you'll pull it off the track and it'll, it'll um, go out that way, won't it? If So the horse should follow the arc of whatever corner you're doing with his three carriages. One, two, three. The aids for bending your horse, flexion, good boy. So flexion, I've done a video on that too and I'll link that in the description and I'll pop it up here. Flexion and bend. So inside rein gives you flexion. Outside rein stops the horse from over bending the neck and the amount of neck bend you need depends on the diameter of the circle. If it's a 20 metre circle, basically none. If it's a 10 metre circle, you definitely need some. So your outside rein is to stop the neck from over bending to the inside and the outside rein controls the wither or the shoulder, depending on what analogy works better for you. I think of it as the shoulder so that I can turn my horse's shoulder like that. That's from my outside rein. Good boy. Outside leg, bottom half of your leg is there to catch the outside of the horse if he falls out. Thigh is there to help the shoulder around. I do use my thigh to help my horse's shoulder come around. Inside leg is there to help the horse bend around. And if he's falling in to just remind him to move over that way and give me some bend. It also um, keeps the hind leg coming in underneath the horse. Now the tips, which I will show you as well, but I want to tell you them now. Most people, the problem I see with most people is they pull their head and neck too much or they think they're driving, riding a push bike. And when you ride a push bike with your handlebars, if you pull this way, because they're rigid, that outside hand has to go forward. When you're riding a horse, it does not go forward. If you do that with your horse, if you do that, that's how you allow the shoulder to jackknife. And then the horse will fall out through the shoulder. So if I pull this and let that, now he's jackknifed. But if I hold my outside rein and ask him to flex, now I didn't have to do anything there. The rein was just there to stop him bent over bending. But how I remember to do that, because particularly when it, my outside rein is my right rein, I'm terrible at putting my hand forward, is I think about the point of my elbow is attached to my hip. It's on a little string there so it can go a little bit forward so that I'm not rigid and tight because the horse isn't going to like that. It's got to have a little bit of um, movement, but it doesn't have a big piece of string where it can go all the way out the front. So with that little tip, let's get on with it. So we'll walk a couple so I can talk you through it. And even in the walk, the aids will happen faster than I can tell you, but I'd like to just walk one through it once and then explain it to you a bit more. So we're coming up to a corner. I'm going to ride a smaller corner here, five meter corner. So I'm gonna warn him on the outside rein once, twice, flexion, bend, inside leg, finish, and out we go. And as you can see, I could give my inside rein. So let's try that again. Listen, listen, bend and flexion off my inside leg, good boy, and walk through the corner. Now, when I say listen, sorry, that's just what I think in my head, I'm actually giving Rebel a half halt. 
there are many different types of half halt that you can do and that's why it's so hard to explain to somebody what a half halt is but when I do my half halt I've got a feeling on my outside rein and I just close my fingers in a squeeze release you must release the release is more important than the squeeze and your half halt should only last for a stride because if you close it and hang on to it you become pulling that's just pulling so it's squeeze release squeeze release and if they don't come through that's what they talk about and what that really means is the horse isn't listening to it so if i do half halt half halt and he doesn't listen i'll do a, a full halt so i do that to say are you listening something's coming and if he doesn't have his ears at me, if his ears are off somewhere else because that's where his mind is, when I do my half halt, his ear will flick back and he go, oh, that's right, we're here doing something. So we're about to do something, so I go, listen, listen. At the same time, usually, I've got my inside flexion and my outside rein goes half halt, half halt. My inside leg goes on. My outside leg, now... I'm as bad as everybody else, okay? In a corner like this, when you've got a fence, it's so easy to allow the fence to be your outside aid. You really need to go do circles where you have no fences so that you are required to use your outside aids because we outside leg at least. I'm happy to put my hand up and say I'm guilty of that too. So you come through. Come on, Rebel, wake up half halt half halt flexion inside leg inside leg inside leg and i let go of the inside leg and i straightened him with the outside rein so again half halt half halt flexion through the corner get off my in yep he lent on my inside leg then and now he's here and you can tell he's bent because i can give the inside rein whilst he's looking this way and he doesn't um, look out because I've got him on the aids I've got him on my inside leg and my outside rein inside leg to outside rein I've done a video about that and I'll link that up here so when you go off in trot that all happens a lot faster so we'll see if I can do a couple in trot and show you half halt half halt flexion bend through the corner with my inside leg outside leg was on then boy can I do it here inside leg inside leg outside legs definitely on here so that he doesn't um, fall out with his hind quarter okay so what happens if I don't have the outside rein if I haven't kept my elbow close to my hip attached now I'm not hanging on to the rein it's not stiff but I'm telling you I've got a nice contact there I'm gonna let go and steer like we do on a push bike and show you what happens. Sorry, Rebel, I apologize in advance. So if I do that, look what happens. See how he falls out through his shoulder, good boy. Sorry, mate. So what happens if I don't use my inside leg? Can you see he's falling in around the, I need to put my leg on and say, yeah, good boy, stay away. So how can you fix that if he's falling on your inside leg? In the very beginning, on a young horse that falls against my leg, if I'm trotting, I'll come back to walk. I'll cut the corner a bit here and then I'll ask him to leg yield. Out a bit, good boy, until I have him on the outside rein. You can do that in trot as well. You just need to cut the corner a bit to give yourself room to leg yield and then leg yield out. Good. Good boy. I hope that helps you. And thanks for watching, guys.